Hello and welcome to the Monday Market Update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 11th of March 2019 and the time has just gone 11.45 GMT, quarter to 12 p.m. London time. Um, it's been, uh, broadly speaking, a positive start to the European session. Uh, the FTSE 100 is doing quite well across the board. Uh, it is a standout performer in uh, the European markets today. Uh, strong demand for financials, mining and energy stocks. Uh, meanwhile, mainland Europe isn't doing so well. Uh, Eurozone equity markets started off um, on, a, on, a positive, uh, on a positive move, but some of those have given up some of their gains. Um, at one point, um, one of the major markets, uh, the IFX, was in negative territory. It's now back out of negative territory. Uh, but, but it's certainly to say that the Eurozone equity markets are underperforming the FTSE 100. We had, a, broadly speaking, a positive session in Asia overnight. And they're broadly speaking, between the Asian session and the what, what we've seen so far of the European session, um, there's still a bit of uncertainty uh, in relation to what's going on in trade. Uh, the US-China China trade situation hasn't been fully resolved. It's been, by, by the sounds of it, they've made good progress, but we haven't really he heard any new details. Um, and even though we did see a positive session in Asia overnight, there are still some concerns about global growth. Uh, bearing in mind uh, the sell-off you saw at the back end of last week, uh, the OECD downgraded growth forecasts, the European Central Bank ground, uh, lowered its growth, growth forecast for the Eurozone, um, and we had a interesting non-farm payrolls on Friday. Um, the headline number was terrible. It was well below expectations. Um, but putting that to one side, there was a, a slight upper division to the previous strong number, Unemployment fell and average earnings on both a month-on-month -month basis and on a year-on-year -year basis increased. So putting aside the headline figure, it was a good report. Um, some people are viewing the fact that the U.S. only added 20,000 jobs in February as a sign the U.S. economy is kind of actually a bit of showing signs of weakness because they believe it is the employers who are cautious and they're not taking on new staff. It can also be read as the U.S. jobs market tightening whereby employers are actually finding it difficult to get a new staff offering their current wages. And we did see unemployment fall. We did see wages tick up. So this could be a sign that, you know what, anybody essentially in the, in the U.S. who wants to be in a job is in a job, and employers are finding it difficult to attract new staff. So I think a combination of lack of detail in relation to the U.S.-China trade situation, still some uncertainty and concern about global growth, and... People, are, the jury is still out in relation to the to the non-farm payroll figure. Um, so I think that that th those, are, th those are all factors that are playing into the, the European session today. Uh, obviously, there was the, the the tragic news over the weekend, um, the, the 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 crash, the air the air airplane crash uh, in Ethiopia all the way over the weekend, where there was no survivors on that particular plane, uh, the Boeing seven three seven. That has had. Um, a major negative impact on Boeing share price in pre-market trading. Uh, already, um, China and Indonesia have come out and stated that they're going to ground all flights that are um, that are by, by that particular plane by Boeing. And as a possibility, um, with this, that that move could be uh, replicated across other countries and other airlines. Uh, so what we're seeing here is a major sell-off in Boeing shares in the pre-market, and that is impacting the Dow futures because Boeing has a disproportionately large uh, impact on the Dow Jones index, whereas a relatively small in, in, or, or smaller impact in the S&P 500. So we are seeing divergence between the two uh, uh, futures markets. Uh, Taking a look now, uh, start off by looking at what's going on on the FTSE 100. And as we can see here, the FTSE has been bouncing back uh, since December. So uh, higher high, higher low, higher high. Um, the market essentially has been kind of is off the kind of the uh, it's still off, off the, the lows of February. And while we remain north of the lows of February um, at seven thousand and forty, we could see the market push on higher. We could be looking at heading up towards seven thousand two hundred. And should we go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting. The, uh, the February high of 7,262. And you notice how that high there essentially coincides with this red line here, the 200-day moving average. So that could, that could be a barrier um, 
for a, if, if should the market move on higher from here. But if you do see the market break north of that barrier, uh, we could be looking at heading up towards 7,400. This area here, see so yeah, a big, big psychological number. And if you can have the wider upward trend that has been in place in, uh, in global equity markets since late December continues, that's, that's, that's an area we could be looking out for. Uh, on the downside, if you do manage to take out the recent lows of 7,040, we could be looking at heading back down towards 7,000, or this yellow line here, the 100-day moving average, which comes into play at 69.80. Take a look now at what's going on over in the German market. So as I was saying, towards the kind of middle or back end of last week, we did see a bit of a, a move to the downside in global equity markets. And it just so happens it coincided with some... Um, a growth downgrades, but also coincided with some big some big levels. So if you take a look at this area here um, at 11,690, we draw a trend line along here, we draw a, support, a line along here. We can see how the market ran into that and actually ran out of steam um, early last week and started to nudge lower. So keep an eye out for this region here at 11,690. The market has kind of shot, it has acted as decent support in the past. It has acted as resistance uh, in November and appears to be acting as resistance again. But bear in mind, global equity markets have been bouncing back since late December. So it could be a case of the market's pullback before it has another attempt on it, or it might be the case of the markets are actually going to be looking to turn over. If you can break north of it at uh, 11,690, obviously keep an eye out for the 30 moving average, this red line here. Uh, 11,817 and should we go beyond that we could be looking heading up towards the big psychological number of 12,000. If we draw a line between the highs of June 2018 and July and September uh, we get this trend line along here and we could, and if the market does manage to drift lower the previous trend line for an act at resistance might actually act as support in the near term so if we do manage to drift lower from here we could be looking at heading back down towards the 11,225 region. Uh, and if we go south of that, uh, this blue line here, the 50-day moving average, uh, just in, just shy of 11,200, that might, might act as support. We can see on a few occasions uh, in, 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 um, in February and also in January, the 50-day moving average acts as support, so it makes it more likely that it will do so in the near term. As I was saying, there's... Um, there's some uh, diversion between the Dow Jones and the S&P 500. The Dow Jones, like what we saw in the FTSE and like what we saw in the DAX, um, failed to get, in early March, failed to kind of press on higher and uh, create fresh multi-month highs. We can see here the last couple of the last few, the, earth, the first few days of uh, March, essentially last week, we did see a, a bit of a move to the downside in the Dow Jones. Uh, if, we, if we continue the drift a bit lower, we could be looking at heading back towards this red line here, the 200 day moving average, which comes into play at 25,148. And if you drop below that, um, this trend line here, which is the, the trend line going from the lows of February 2018 through March and April, this trend line along here, that comes into play. This south of, of the 30 moving average comes into play in around 25,000. It also coincides with, you know, the kind of big psychological number of 25,000. So if the market does manage to drift lower from its current levels of around 25,325, we could be looking heading back down towards the psychologically important 25,000. But if the wider upward trend that has been in place um, since late December continues, and this is just this just happens to be a bit of a um, bit of a bit of a pullback from that, we could be looking at heading up back up towards 26,000. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting the October high of 26,278. Keep an eye on this trend line here because I'll be talking about the S&P 500 in one minute. And for the time being, the Dow Jones is above this trend line. So that trend line might act as support. Uh, one of the components of Dow theory is that the, that the averages must confirm each other. And if you draw a trend line between on the S&P 500 of the lows of February 2016 with the lows of November 2016, we get this trend line along here. And similar situation to, um, on the S&P 500 as with the Dow Jones, whereby the market created a multi-month high and then has been drifting lower. And the Dow and the S&P 500 now is pretty much sitting on its on its um, 200 moving average, which comes to play in around 27, 2750, 51. 
but notice how we're, we're above a trend line this uh, this trend line so while the Dow and the S&P are both above the respective trend lines it makes it more likely that they're they're going to get there that they're going to continue to to be in the upper trend if both trade below their trend lines it makes it more likely that that, 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 that previous trend line support might once again act as trend line resistance so if we do see a further drifted downside in the S&P uh, support might be found from this area here in around uh, 2710 or maybe even from the 2,700 level itself, a big psychological number. Uh, if, the man if the market can manage to kind of push on higher from here and bounce back, we could be looking at heading up towards the 2,800 mark. And when I talked about how the, the, the DAX uh, shied away from an important level last week, we saw a similar situation with the uh, S&P 500, where, whereby this region here of 2,817, 820, um, 2817, 2820. Uh, this region acts at resistance in October, November, and December. And as you can see here in March, the market got as high as 2819 before it started to drift lower. So that area is potentially going to act as a big area of resistance in the near term. So if the market can trade above it and hold above it, that, 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 that could be further proof or further indication that the market is going to continue in the, tr the upward trend it's been in since late December. But if it doesn't, that area of 2,819 or so is going to is likely to act as continue as resistance. If you can get above 2,820, we could be looking at heading up towards this area here, uh, 2,866. And if you go beyond that, we could be looking at heading up towards 2,900 and beyond. Take a look now at what's going on on the gold market. So gold began its bounce back in mid-August, uh, and then but really since around kind of middle of November have we been in a nice upper trend, a nice series of higher highs and higher lows. So granted, we did see a fairly sizable sell-off last week on the back of the dollar strength. The dollar index last uh, last week hit a three-month high, and it's been, been a strong inverse relationship between the greenback and gold uh, for the past year or so. Um, so the strength of the dollar drove gold lower, but we are see now they're seeing a bit of a um, bit of a pullback in the greenback. We are seeing gold edge higher, and gold itself um, is fairly at the mercy of the U.S. dollar. But the, the Federal Reserve don't appear to be hiking interest rates uh, in the near term, so it's likely we could see a continuation of this upward trend that's gold that the gold has been in for a number of months. So if you can hold the ball, the recent lows, uh, last week's lows. Which come into play around the kind of 1280 area, it's, it's likely we could see um, gold continue its wider upward trend, and we could be looking at targeting. Um, we could be looking at heading back up towards the psychologically important 1300, and should it go beyond that, we could be looking at heading up towards 1320, and the move beyond that could be looking at takes up towards 1350 or 1366, an area not seen since April last year. But if you do see a size of break below, not only the recent lows in around the kind of 1280 area, but also these lows here in around 1276, that could suggest that actually this, we're going to see further ground to be lost uh, for gold. And it could take us back down towards this yellow line here, the 100 day moving average, which comes into play at 1267. And we notice how the 100 day moving average managed to act as a support on a few occasions at the back end of last year. So it makes it more likely that, that it's going to do so again in the near term. Take a look now at the oil market. So after its bounce back from December, um, the oil market has been largely range bound the last few weeks. It hasn't really moved a whole lot. And essentially to the upside on the oil market, uh, even though the oil market has been essentially been nicely propped up by the water day moving average, this this uh, yellow line here, which comes to play at 63 spot 59, if you could hold above that, we could see the market push on higher, and we could look at retesting the recent highs, uh, which come into play in around 67 spot 75. And if you go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting uh, the mid-November high of 68 spot 36, and a move beyond that could take us up to seven dollars a barrel. Um, should we break below the 100 day moving average, we could see support come into play from this blue line here, the 50 day moving average, uh, in at 62 spot 42. And a move below that could take us back down towards the psychologically important 60 bucks per barrel. So that is Brent. It's a fairly similar looking chart for WTI. 
why the market's been bounced bounced back from from um from December. But the last few weeks has been relatively speaking range bound, and once again, it's getting decent support from the 100 day moving average, which comes to play at 54 spot 46. And if we hold above that, uh, we could be looking at retesting the recent highs uh, in a 57 spot 40, uh, spot 44. And if you go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting the mid November high of in around kind of 58, 58, 10. And move beyond that, could take us up to the psychological important of $60 a barrel. Moves to the downside, uh, my final support from the 5th of the moving average, this blue line here, in at 53 spot 41. And should we go below that, we could be looking at heading back down towards the psychologically important 50 bucks per barrel. Take a look now at sterling. So pound dollar has been broadly speaking in an upward trend uh, since mid, 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 uh, mid December. You know, we saw quite an aggressive move to late January. The market pulled back another multi-month high in February, but it's pulled back. And we're currently just pretty much on the kind of psychologically important one spot 30 mark, which also coincides with this red line here, the 200 moving average. And while we could probably could hold above that, it's like we could see further gains being made. We could see the market retest the kind of 132 area or the recent high of kind of say around the kind of one spot 3360 region. If you do have a fairly decisive break below the kind of 130 mark, we could be looking at heading back down towards the mid-February lows of in around uh, one spot 2775 or one spot 2770 area. It's obviously going to be a, a fairly important week in relation to uh, Brexit votes, which I'll be talking now about the week ahead. And the week ahead article can be found on our website if you go to cmcmarkets.com and under news analysis, uh, the bulk of the of the updates that we do. Uh, for myself and other analysts get uploaded to this section of the website so uh, please uh, check it on a daily basis um, several times a day so looking at the week ahead um, later today on Monday we have US retail sales tomorrow we have UK GDP industrial and uh, manufacturing production figures out also tomorrow from the US we have US CPI inflation figures tomorrow we have full year figures from Domino's Pizza on Wednesday, we have the spring statement, and we also have the, have the uh, we have votes in relation to Brexit. That's obviously going to cause a lot of political news. But the last few weeks and months, um, the financial markets have been good at stripping off the political news and just focusing on the actual on the actual economic news. But uh, we, we could see heightened volatility on the British pound uh, this week in relation to both the spring statement and also the, the various votes that are going on in the House of Commons. On Wednesday, uh, the over in the US, we. Um, um, the, com the company, the, 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 the consumer group, um, Williams, um, Simona, have fourth quarter figures, uh, fourth quarter results coming out. On Thursday, we have industrial production and retail sales figures from China. On Thursday, we have full year figures from Sydney World here in the UK. And finally, on Friday, we have full year figures from Restaurant Group. Um, just last thing before I go, if you have any comments to make on this video or any of the other videos we've made here at CMC Markets, please feel free to leave a review on Google Reviews. And that's all for me this week. Thank you very much.